everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, we're going to be making a plank, wooden plank base using a miniature base and one of these um, lollipop stick craft sticks. This one's come pre painted, so it's basically primed for me. Value, value city. Uh, it's a bit bold, and then we've got a craft knife as well, and then a, a cutting mat just to protect my desk underneath. So let's get started. And let's begin by snapping Sophie's craft stick in half. Wow, wow, wow. Do check out our Patreon. Do consider supporting Sophie so we can buy her a new lollipop stick. Link in the description below. Then let's snap it again into quarters. And you can see it's already splintering. And I think that's going to just add to the effect of this sort of wooden plank broken boat style thing. So we've got four pieces and hopefully it'll yeah look quite weathered. So let's get the craft knife and then very, very, very carefully, I'm gonna sort of score this down the middle-ish. It doesn't need to be banged down the middle, obviously, uh, but we'll uh, we'll try and get it about even. And then the reason I've snapped it first is, is just so we can make all the planks slightly different sizes. They're not all gonna end up being cut evenly or the same the same width if I scored it accidentally perfectly down the middle so they're all going to be different widths different lengths it's going to be a nice sort of random effect and I think hopefully make a the base look better and be more realistic as well so eventually a few scores later and we can snap that one easily in half and then the same on the next one we're just going to score score a handful of times apply a bit of pressure and then prize that apart. I think if I had a pair of pliers, I'd be able to grip it a little bit better and possibly more safely and probably wouldn't even need to cut it, to be honest, if I had a pair of pliers to pull it apart. So once we've snapped and cut a bunch of those and sort of, I've, I've honestly, I've just taken the knife and jabbed it a few times as well, just making this look rough, rough and cut, like realistic bits of wood. So we'll, we'll, we'll get one more. Now I've lined that up, but I don't think I've got quite the coverage I want. And I don't want big gaps between these, but this is personal preference. You guys want to do as you please, sort of as you line them up on, on your base. But I've sort of switched them up, mixed them in between. So none of the planks fit nicely back together accidentally. Lining two pieces up that I'd snapped from the same one would just make it look like the lollipop stick was back together. Then I'm going to spend a little bit of time just arranging this around and you guys will need to do this yourselves and just work out what works best for you. And then once you've got roughly the right layout, you might need to trim some down. I'm just cutting down this corner piece that I had the, at the end piece of the lollipop, which just looked way too processed. And I'm pulling that off and I'm very happy to see that splinter along the wood, just making another little bit of weathering, a little bit of detail that's going to come out looking nice. And then once again, now I'm completely happy with the lineup. I am going to take my craft knife and I'm just going to, you know, scratch in some notches. So I'm going to peel some back. I might leave some of that sort of peeling on the, on the wood itself and we'll paint it in a minute and make that look realistic. We're going to cut some grooves in it. We're going to score it. We're going to scrape it. We're just going to do... And if you want, if you've got some sandpaper, maybe take a little bit of that to it. Do whatever you'd like just to make these look a little bit more realistic, a bit like a plank of wood maybe in the ocean or a boat that's taken some damage or, or, or don't do any of this if you want a much smoother, more perfect looking, looking piece of plank. And then after that, we'll whip out some super glue and we'll just apply a little bit. Now, unfortunately, the wood's a bit porous, so it's going to slurp up some of this glue. So I am actually applying plenty and I might have to go back to a couple of these after uh, after I film just to make sure they are definitely set. But yeah, just basically putting them in the order that I've just planned out carefully, placing those, adding glue, letting them dry off camera so you guys don't need to watch all the super glue dry. But once you've seen, I've placed the place that one I just picked this one up and saw it was too perfect for my liking so scrape some more dints and notches into it and then we'll just be gluing that one down and so on and so forth and once you've glued it all down you do want to set that to one side and let that drive properly I found personally super glue is the easiest way of ruining some of your nice brushes when applying paint so once it's dry it's going to look a little bit like this already you can sort of see what it's going to look like at the end and the next steps are just going to be us simply painting that into um, the colors that we would like this wood to, to look. And I'm gonna go for sort of brown wood. And just here, you can just see that, I, I, you know, I'm scratching on some more wood grain, even though it's wood, it's, 
it didn't have the the detail of the grain that I would like. So I'm just scoring some additional lines carefully down each one of these planks. And again, this is a, just an additional step. You can just see the amount of sort of detail I was going for. This is going to be a competition entry base that I'm painting up here. If you'd like to see a much, much quicker, easier video, I've got one on the Game Envy. 3d wood laser cut bases which take minutes to paint and they're very very little effort but as i mentioned this is for a competition so i'm going a little bit all out here i'm using army painters leather brown and just an old regiment brush and i'm just going to apply that all over that just give that a nice brown base coat then their deep shader that dark brown shader that that wash that i use and i'm going to apply that generously all over i'm even letting it pool in some of the nooks and crannies and those the splits over the the edges of, of each of those planks. I just I would like this to soak that in and go really, really dark. This is how it looks after the base coat and the wash. And you could actually just stop there. I mean, that looks like wooden planks to me, uh, very, very weathered, a bit flat, a bit lacking in detail to some extent. So the next step, we will go on to highlighting. And what I actually did is completely forget to film the highlighting. So, uh, you know, that's dedication to the cause. I went back and rewashed it, but we'll fill the highlighting this time going through. So I am taking leather brown and arch ear brown, arch ear, still can't pronounce it very well, mixing that about 50 50, getting that slightly lighter than leather brown look for this particular plank board. And then we're going to be dry brushing. So I'm taking off as much of that paint as I can, just leaving the very, very slight amount on the brush so you can see nothing's coming off at that point but there will be still some on the brush and then I'm going to lightly catch that along all of the planks and that's going to really highlight out all the, the protruding parts of the wood all of the raised bits and make that look bring out first of all it's going to bring out the detail again make it really really pop and second of all it's going to highlight it it's going to make it look a lot more 3d i mean I, I say first and second they're basically the same thing this is going to make it pop and look realistic and 3d and it's gonna it's it's worth doing this step especially as it's i'm only going to dry brush there's nothing more to it than dry brushing and dry brushing is one of the quickest easiest ways of highlighting a a, a, a miniature or, or a base in this in this case i'm just going to go around and do that a few coats two or three coats really taking my time and building that up, making it look very realistic and building it up, allowing it to give it like a transition. It's catching much more each time on the most raised bits. And then I'm gonna use that Ochia Brown and just again, take it all off the brush, even making sure more than last time, I'm more lightly doing it. So this time I'm really, I'm gonna catch those, those the edges of each plank if I can, all of those splits, all of those splinters that are coming out of it. I really would like those to be the most highlighted part. And then, yeah, just by doing it light, very, very lightly, I will only catch the most raised parts of each of those planks. But you can see I'm focusing on those, um, on well, the edges or the, the splinters, however you'd like to describe that. But they're the bits I'd like to be the brightest on this. And that's it. We're just going to watch me do this for a minute. As I mentioned, this is for a competition. I would not be doing this for my entire rum and bone Simon games um, pirate base themed uh, miniatures with all, all the hordes. I don't know if you know that game. I'm sure a lot of you do. But for that, I would be rebasing in something like those Game Envy ones. But for a competition, a one-off model, maybe a hero. Um, there's a few in green horde that I've already painted. The Prince-based one, uh, he's pirate-like. And I think there's another one that's pirate-like. You'll have to let me know in the comments below. But I'm, I would potentially do that for that sort of hero, that sort of centerpiece of a game then i'm going to use a bizzle black from that new dungeons and dragons set but any of army painters black any black would do but uh, you know army painter is the way forward in on this channel but any black will do and i'm just going to paint around the rim and really bring the focus back to, to the scent to the important part the, the top of that base and that is it it's completely finished this did take quite a while uh, mainly because i did the highlighting twice to make sure i filmed it the second time but we're talking mm, 30 minutes work or something which is i think is quite a lot for a base but it, i think that looks pretty good and it wasn't difficult the thing is it might have taken a while but it wasn't difficult i had to wait for washers to dry etc etc and then after that i went ahead and just put my rocks the model box fox captain rocks put the pirate onto onto this base and also painted up one of those model box chests that i got at some point and added on some of that gatehouse gaming uk 
gold nuggets and really just hopefully finishing off and making that base look all the much better hopefully fingers crossed competition winning this month we'll we'll see i'll uh, let you know if anyone's interested and then i guess finally let me know in the comments below if you would like to see some more detailed basing videos like this maybe knocking it up a level competition style or just if you're willing to put more effort into bases than i am let me know in the comments below thank you all very much for watching and i'll see you again next week